in Christ? This phenomena is also shown by another Hi class, is everything fine? Please confirm me. Only then I will start. Only one student have joined me here. So I have joined the lecture again. Okay, we start now. Uh, so we did this uh, last part with oxidation and reduction. So let's talk another type of uh, its types. I think we left uh, my lecture got stopped till here on the 12th slide. So with strong oxid oxidizing agents like your uh, nitric acid with both aldehyde or ketone group or oxidized to yield dicarboxylic acid. Uh, Then oxidation with metal hydroxides. So metal hydroxides like copper, uh, uh, copper hydroxides. So or also like silver hydroxides, which tend to oxidize your free aldehyde group or ketone group of mutarating sugars, which reduce themselves to lower oxidize of your free metals. Then reduction, so the aldehyde or ketone group present can be reduced to its respective alcohol with sodium amalgam. For example, fructose and glucose which gives a uh, hexahydric alcohol, sorbitol, mannitol. Then dehydration, uh, these monosaccharides when treated with concentrated hydrogen uh, sulfuric acid, they get dehydrated to form 5-hydroxyl methyl furfur derivative. Then also methylation or esterification is possible with glucosidic and alcoholic uh, hydroxyl group of monosaccharides and reducing disaccharides react with the acetylating agents like acetic anhydride in peridine to form acetate derivatives called esters. Then these carbohydrates are divided also into two parts that is reducing and non-reducing sugars. So whenever the free carbonyl group or hemacetyl group, they give positive test to benetic failing reagents. So without having hydrolyzed, they refer to as reducing sugar and other than are non-reducing. So reducing sugar is the one which are having these carbohydrates with free aldehyde group or free ketone group. On the other side, uh, these are not free on the non-reducing, but they are utilized in the bond formation. And they do not show a reducing sugar, they show mutarization, non-reducing not. And they show ozazines and oxyme formation. 
with phenyl hydrazine and hydroxylamine, whereas this is not possible in the non-reducing sugar. Examples are glucose, fructose, lactose, amaltose, cell bios in the reducing, whereas the non-reducing is a sucrose, glycogen and insulin. Second part is your now monosaccharides we have discussed, that is your oligosaccharides. So these are the compounds that, that yields around 2 to 10 molecules of the same or different monosaccharides on hydrolysis and they could be of two molecules that is monosaccharides or hydrolysis so first to four like here we have shown four examples that is disaccharides trisaccharides tetrasaccharides and pentasaccharides so disaccharides includes uh, sugar uh, sucrose lactose maltose cell bios uh, trihalose gentobios uh, melibios so the trisaccharides includes raminose gentinose raffinose rabinose and malazitose the tetrasaccharides include stacrose and sucrodose yeah? and then the pentasaccharides includes your webrocose. So here we can see maltose uh, in the presence of water and maltase enzyme they give glucose and glucose whereas the lactose in the presence of water and lactase enzymes they give glucose and galactose. On the other hand glucose in the presence of sucrase gives glucose plus fructose. Then comes your disaccharides, they are composed of two monosaccharides. The cells can make disaccharides by joining two monosaccharides by biosynthesis. So glucose plus fructose give rise to sucrose, your glucose plus galactose give rise to lactose, then your glucose plus glucose give rise to maltose. So it includes your table sugar, the glucose plus fructose, which is found naturally in plants, sugar cane, sugar beets, honey, maple syrup. And they are sucrose may be purified from the plant source into brown, white, and powdered sugar. And the primary sugar in milk and milk products and the lactose, and the many people have problem in digesting large amount of lactose. So they are known as your lactose intolerant. So their special milk is coming for them. We don't have milk is getting rid of lactose enzyme. And then these maltose, they are produced when the starch get break down, usually using the fermentation reactions of alcohol and beer manufacturing. So, following structures of glucose yeah, and fructose, this lactose is made up of glucose and galactose and maltose made up of two glucose group here. So some trisaccharides now, after discussing monosaccharides and disaccharides, let's discuss about trisaccharides. So they have three monosaccharides actually, so for example, raffinose, which is includes your glucose plus fructose plus galactose, all three together. So this is the some uh, relative sweetness, so taking sucrose as standard, reference standard, now making it 200 so the comparable values of other sugars has been calculated for galactose is 30 times like 70 times lesser 30 times only glucose is 75 fructose is the highest sweet the highest uh, sugar in that and lactose is only 16 maltose 33 and some sugar alcohols is sorbitol maltitol xylitol uh, so xylitol is also around 100 and there are some artificial sweeteners like aspartame, saccharine, sucralose, neotame. So, you know, whenever you go to the any juice shop or any shake shop, um, mostly they are not using natural sugar because that is expensive. So, they are using this saccharine actually because that has, you can see, if it is 100 and if they put just two pinch of it, it's 45,000. You can see how large the amount of sugar level is. So, this is highly used in the market and and this is one of the, you know, um, also not good for health. It's one of the best bad thing ever. So it's better to tell them that you don't want to be added your sugar into your juice. You can have it without it. And also there are three sugars in the market available like refined sugar, uh, jaggery sugar and brown sugar. Actually brown sugar is just a refined version of the white sugar. So there's not much difference between brown and that sugar. And beyond that, the jaggery one is still fine, but I will prefer to go for um, honey. Honey is the best source of sugar. So whenever you want to drink tea or milk 
or you want a source of sugar into it you can use uh, uh, honey or beyond that go for stevia stevia so this these sugars are made from tulsi that's also a natural source of sugar a very good one then these polysaccharides uh, they are containing 10 or more uh, monosaccharides units attached together so examples are starch uh, which are digestible glycogen which are also digestible fiber which are indigestible so basically these polysaccharides are the long chain of glucose units so cellulose gives structures to plants fibers to our diet and glycogen is energy storage uh, sugar produced by animals and liver cells synthesize glycogen after a meal to maintain blood glucose level so majority of these carbohydrates in nature they act as a uh, they are polysaccharides so chemically the polysaccharides may be distinguished into uh, homopolysaccharides which yield on hydrolysis a single monosaccharides and there is also heteropolysaccharides which produce mixture of monosaccharides on hydrolysis so based on their functional aspect polysaccharides will be two heads that is uh, nutrient digestible polysaccharides or structural indigestible polysaccharides so the first one they, they are metabolic reserves of monosaccharides in plants and animals example starch glycogen and insulin where the second one the structural polysaccharides these serve as a rigid mechanical structures in plants and animals example cellulose pectin and many more so your mylose or uh, mylose pectin in the presence of a mylase they give dextrin and then in the presence of a mylase again they give maltose and in the presence of maltase they give many glucose units so that's how you break them into different parts so first type of your polysaccharide that is your starch that is majorly digestible polysaccharide in our diet um, mainly the, they are the reason for the storage in the carbohydrate in the plants as a form of carbohydrate so the source that we get it from is your wheat rice corn rind barley potato tubers yams highly like 80 percent that we get these carbohydrates from our daily diet so this is also the plant starches of two types that is a mylose and a mylose pectin yeah. so the mylose is a two group of like many chain of your glucose um, whereas a myelopectin is actually branch chain and the, it's a one carbon and six carbon so they make a branch together and this will be known as your myelopectin myelopectin is more branch than the mylose so mylose it's a straight chain which are linked by the one alpha one four linkage indicating 300 to 5500 glucose units per molecule and molecular weight range from 10 is 12 5 to 10 is 12 6 generally it is water soluble and gives blue color with iodine whereas a myelopectase it contains uh, besides straight chain several branch chains which are arranged into alpha 1 4 beta 1 6 linkage units so one molecule of a myelopectin contains 50,000 to 500,000 glucose molecules and the weight ranges from 10 to 12 7 to 10 to 12 8 and they are not soluble in water and gives purple color with iodine so this is your alpha uh, the bond between in the myelopectin between the branch chain is known as alpha 1 6 glycoside linkage whereas the linkage between the two um, it will be your alpha 1 4 glycoside linkage uh, that's the main difference this is structure of a mylose and this is structure of your myelopectin then second type which is digestible in our body is your cellulose sugar that is present in your cotton in fibers and but they are not indigestible by the humans so this is how the there is a beta d glucose and beta d glucose and the long chain of the same so beta d glucose beta d glucose in the cotton in the plants they are all present and they are also bonded by beta 1 4 glycosidic bond then third one that is your glycogen so they are the storage form of glucose in the body they are stored in our liver and muscles and found in tiny amounts in meat sources and they are not found in plants and it's not a fixed significant source of carbohydrates also so this is even more branched so uh, if this single branch is going then the one branch will start to grow here like this and second goes to go here like this and from that branch again and so on 
so that's a multi multi branched than the uh, amylopectin or amylose yeah. so in in summary this is the concept map of carbohydrates so they are divided into monosaccharides disaccharides and polysaccharides so the monosaccharides and disaccharides they form glycosidic bond to form a long chain here um, so the monosaccharides they includes your glucose galactose fructose um, further uh, these are your reducing sugars and then they also disaccharides from maltose and lactose and also your sucrose whereas the polysaccharides includes your glucose as a polymer as a monomer uh, and it will find in the plants as a mylose and mylose pectins and cellulose and in animals it will be stored as a glycogen so that's very nice summary of what we have studied so far again uh, from the food source of perspective this will be good from your uh, that which kind of sugar is good for us so far to get the highest sugar level is present in the fruit juices like your mango grapes lychee at the moment coming in the market fruit juices honey um, yeah, fruit juices glucose also maltose from the germinating grains milk yogurt ice cream uh, soup, sugar cane sugar beets and so on so polysaccharides from rice wheat greens uh, glycogen from liver muscles and cellulose from plant fibers browns and beans and some of the main clinical aspect of them how they are important for us so glucose is the highly most important energy source of carbohydrates in the mammals they are the bulk of dietary carbohydrates digested and finally absorbed as a glucose into the body whereas the dextrose is frequently used in the medical practice and fructose is abundantly found in the semen which is utilized by the sperms for energy several diseases are associated with the carbohydrates example diabetes mellitus glycogen storage disease and galactosemia and the accumulation of sorbitol and gluxitol uh, in the tissues may cause certain pathological conditions example cataract and nephropathy and the non digestible carbohydrate cellulose plays a significant role in the human nutrition and these includes the decreasing intestinal absorption of glucose and cholesterol and increasing bulk of feces to avoid constipation and mucopolysaccharides they are hyaluronic acids serve as a lubricant and shock absorbent in joints and the mucopolysaccharides hairpin is an anticoagulant and the survival of Antarctic fish below minus 2 degrees Celsius is because of the antifreeze protein called as glycoprotein. And streptomycin is a glycoside employed in the treatment of your tuberculosis also. So that's it for the reading. Thank you very much. I think we will make our session here done. So, okay students then, take care, bye-bye, see you tomorrow, uh, no, not tomorrow, we will see us on Monday then, yeah, that's it so far, we will discuss about now more about uh, further functionality of uh, medicinal biochemistry, okay then, take care, have a nice day and enjoy your weekend.